Hey there! Today we're going to have a look at what I find a very interesting pen. This is not my pen. This is a pen from Eric. We all know Eric from FB Geeks, etc. Uh, and he 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 came around and he said, uh, "Here, have a look at this." Danny Trio, aka Danny Trio. All kinds of pronunciations possible. I have not yet heard anyone say Danny Trio. But apart from that, I've heard pretty much everything, and I simply do not know how to pronounce the name of the brand correctly. I'm sorry. This is the Mikado. You could also say Mikado, etc. We can go into the whole argument yet again. I'm going to say Mikado because Mikado, I, that sounds most logical to me, but I could be wrong. And this is a very pretty one because it has Tamanuri. Uh, lacquer or Tamanuri style lacquer on there. This also is the clipped version. There's also a clip less version. There's also a flat top version. And this is the rounded top version. I think this is the prettiest one. I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, tell you what I like about it, tell you what I don't like about it, and then we'll do a writing sample. Okay, let's start. Very top of the pen. Finial, nothing. This is just lacquer. Beautiful cap, and I like this clip. Uh, the clip has Denitrio on there. It's one of those clips where you can kind of push there to make it move a little bit, and I did find this a very pleasant clip. Works very, very well. Um, always nice with this type of lacquer at the edges. You get a very nice color, uh, well, gradient, I would say. And then you have the barrel and the end there. You can see it's very, very reflective. It's a very nice lacquer job they did. Cap screws off. Ebonite body. Lacquer on top of that. Very nice uh, section. I like that. That uh, I'm assuming it says Denitrio. I could be completely off. Maybe it says Mikado. I'm sorry. I just don't know. But I like the way this is done. Very tastefully. Gold on there. I like it. The nib is a large nib. And this is a, uh, a stub nib. Uh, a factory stub. Uh, it says Danitrio. It's 18 karat gold. And um, I really, really like what they did with this nib. I think that the pattern on there, gold and I assume rhodium, uh, that, that works very, very well together. Very nice pattern, and it looks uh, very oriental. It's a, it's a very, very nice look. Interesting filling system. Uh, first of all, large pen. This is clearly an oversized pen. Pretty thick, good girth, and fairly long. And a very interesting filling system. Same filling system that is used, for example, on the Namiki Emperor. Eyedropper filled with a one-way shut-off valve. So, what does that mean? It means you open up the pen, yes, unscrew the section, should be a bit of grease on the threads obviously, take an eyedropper and just fill the pen. You can imagine, I haven't measured, you can imagine it holds quite a bit of ink because that's a big barrel. And as you write, it is empty, quick check, and as you write, there is a shut off valve in there, you can make the pen wetter or drier by unscrewing that valve. Yeah? Don't have to do this as you write. You shouldn't do that as you write because once you push that back in you're going to get into trouble. But it's interesting. You can see what's going on there. That section has a bit of a hole in there and in the barrel, I don't know how well you can see that, probably not at all. Let me just hold up that white thing again. In there is that shut off valve, which you can, by unscrewing it, gently pull back, you get a richer ink flow, or you screw it and you get a uh, just a uh, drier flow. Um, this is not really a pen made for posting, it's lacquer, nor is it necessary to post it because it's, it's large to begin with. What do I like about the pen? What do I not like about the pen? Uh, first of all, this is not a cheap pen. You have to look at about $1,500. Street, street price can be a little lower. Maybe if you get it directly from Japan, uh, you can get it at a, an even better price. But these are not cheap pens. But you were buying a large ebonite body with 
lacquer, hand, I was going to say painted, but I guess hand lacquered, it's put on by hand. That is not a cheap endeavor. And there is, it's not just like they, they take a paint roller, roller and they just put lacquer on. I mean, it's, it's a very skilled job. Also the lacquer itself uh, has a cost, etc. So with these types of pens, I always think you buy an art piece. Um, and that's not for everyone. If you are a hardcore user, you want to be able to throw your pens in a bag, a pen like this is probably not for you. And I, uh, I never really understood the whole hype with Urushi until I really started to really hold these pens. Because I'm sure that if you look at this in a video, it looks nice, but it doesn't look spectacular. If you look at this in real life, you see so many subtle differences in light, in color, in, in gradient of the color going from light to darker to light again. It's very special. So I do see the appeal of these pens. But you pay a lot, and undoubtedly that's not worth it for everyone. This pen is an interesting nib, factory stub, fine medium broad stub available, if I remember correctly. It's an interesting stub. Uh, it writes well, I'll, I'll show you that in the, uh, in the writing part of the video. Anything I don't like about it? Well, I have, a, I have mixed feelings about this filling system. The reason being that it's great when you have a pen that has such a large, large ink capacity. Also, I have a similar thing in my Namiki Emperor that works fine, it doesn't leak, it's, it's perfect. The only issue I find with it is that I like a slightly wetter writer and this is a beautiful pen, but once you want to write with it, you want to make it a bit more wetly, you have to unscrew that end cap. It's not a big deal, but aesthetically it pretty much ruins the pen. Is that a bad thing? Not necessarily, it's just part of the design, it's how it works. Don't cry over spilled milk, it's just the way it is. Um, but if I were to nitpick, that's what I would say. What I do really like is that when you close that valve, you pretty much don't see a line anymore. That's really impressive. You barely see where the, the, the valve uh, begins and the barrel ends. Some angles you see a little bit more than others, but I think that just shows the, the, the mastery in creating this pen. And there you have it! The Mikado. We need to see how the pen writes. High resolution pictures, as well as dimensions of the pen, will be on the website, sbrebrown.com. I hope this was useful so far. We're going to write with that pen. And I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. All right, so here we go with this Denny Trio Mikado. Just for my preferences, I'm going to open up that valve a bit, and uh, let's see what we can do. The nib is a stub, and the ink is Mont Blanc. Irish green. It is a fairly crisp nib, so I don't think I would call this a stub, but more of an actual italic. But it is a very pleasant writer. But a fast writing always difficult with an italic because if you misalign it, it's going to skip. And I do honestly believe that the skips here are kind of because I, I may rotate a bit too much here and there. Wetness. Well, of course, that valve is open a bit. And you see it's not exactly a gusher because Irish Green is very wet ink. Um, so I find the nib slightly on the dry side. But with a good wet, wet ink, I do think it does quite well. Italic nib. Lot of line variation, but you can also just push down on the nib a little bit, and as you can see, it's fairly springy, and you can definitely squeeze out some more line variation out of this. Reverse writing on an italic nib always difficult, and it doesn't really work here. And they have it. The Denitrio Mikado, 
I think it's a beautiful pen. Very, very pleasant. Very nice nib. I hope this was useful, and uh, I'll gladly see you later.